Hey everyone, welcome to video 7 of 10 in our drywall series. I'm Cody with Up to Code. And I'm Camille. Today we're going to run through coating our first coat on our flats and we also have to start our angles because we're going to do one side of the angles now and one at the very end. So we'll show you all that as we go. Before we start coating flats, I want to talk about the butt joints. This was that super butt joint that I had to tie into the corner bead. This is where the tape sits right here. The other two butt joints behind me, I came the next day, 24 hours later, and they were still moist. I could tell that they were wet. So it takes a lot of time for this mud to dry, especially on a first coat, because it's basically you filled it up the most. So you want to give it sufficient time I, we give it two days. You can crank the heat and get some fans running and get your humidity down if you, if you can. But like I said before at the beginning, corner beads, when you set them, you want them to dry and adhere and basically shrink back as much as possible before coating. Same with the first coat on our butts. Get it nice and dry so that it's shrunk back all the way and then when you coat again, it's done, you know? Anyway, so before we start coating, you'll Remember these ridges? So you're gonna see a ridge here and here because I came up right over center of my tape and we left these little ridges, which isn't a big deal. Now you can't really see it on film, but you can feel it in real life. I know I'm really flat in here and I could just basically, I could tell it's flat and I can feel all the ridges. So we're gonna sand these down just really lightly just to get rid of these high spots. We're gonna chew down some of this overhang on this corner bead. And then once we do a little bit of sanding, we can wipe these flats all the way through. So if you guys remember, Camille did an awesome job on this one. The only thing we could have done slightly different is just add a little more mud on the left here and just cut it off a bit better. But we'll take care of that when we do the second coat later on. So Camille, just feel, you can feel all the ridges, but it actually feels pretty flat overall. And then we'll check it after we sand it and it should actually feel really good. So just, it's hard to see it. You gotta feel, feel with the palm of your hand and just kind of go fairly quick. And it feels pretty flat besides those ridges, hey? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So I think your butt joint looks really good. Mine's a little lopsided, it's off center, that's okay. We're just going to do a quick scrub, get all the high spots off, get those ridges gone. We're going to probably just switch cameras. I don't want to wreck my good camera gear, so you'll, it might just be poor quality, but really it's just a quick sand. I don't want to create too much dust, and then we'll get into coating. So Camille and I took turns sanding that out. It was just a quick scrub. We just basically went over everything. We wanted to knock off all the high points, make sure we don't get any hitchhikers on our first coat. And then we went over the, the flats really quick just to knock off any high spots. When we go to the flats, we'll just use our knife to scratch out any highs. So now I gave my mud uh, a spin already. We're good to go. We can start coat flats. Perfect. Okay. I don't need a ton of mud because we already pre-filled these flats once before. They're not gonna take a whole lot of mud. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just keep fairly narrow strip of mud on my hawk. And I only wanna load about that much in the center of my trowel. Then I'm gonna apply it, because I don't wanna to go too wide yet. And once I apply it and it starts getting too wide, I'll just reload it, make sure that the pile of mud on my hawk is about the width that I wanna start mudding at, about that much. And I'll just apply it. Now you see how I have a hollow spot up top there? I'll just load up the top end. I'll just coat a little bit there. I might just for, just for fun. Now I don't need to go that far to the bead. I don't want to build up onto the bead. I'm just going to lightly go this way just to spread the mud, get rid of any bubbles. I'm going to try to just wipe it tight 
without cutting these edges because because it's a flat the drywall is essentially all flat I should be able to just wipe it tight and I'm gonna hold my trowel pretty much 90 degrees and wipe it right off that was smooth I don't want to go too wide yet I have one more coat and then I'll go a little bit wider on the last coat and the reason I stood it more angular is I want it straight. If I go flat and push on it, I'm going to just bend my trowel and create a hollow again. So I'll do this other side and then Camille can show you folks how she does it. So like I said, keep your pile of mud about the width you want to apply it. Now because I'm wiping this way, I'll load up this side of the trowel. About that wide. I don't have to be like ultra tight into the corner because when I wipe my angle I don't really need a whole lot okay so I'm already going a little too wide I can just correct that do a little bit wipe that off I'll just wipe it once really light just to get it consistent and because it's a flat, I don't need to cut those edges. And just make sure you didn't build out anything on the bead, which I didn't, but it was close. Yeah, I heard it. <laughs> yeah. All right, Camille, you want to give this a shot? Sure. Code just makes it look easy. How do you make it look so easy? Yeah, you got the right idea. So start, so when you apply, start square, and then as you keep going, you go flatter, 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 flatter. Yeah. I don't think that's enough to do anything. That's okay. You could probably just go over that lightly once. Do it again and stand it up a bit more. Okay, now don't wipe it off. Okay. Load a little bit more right there. I have to wipe it off because okay. it, was it wasn't at the top. Okay, well you got the, the method, perfect. Right. So a little more square to the wall, a little more 90 degrees to the wall. So yeah, tuck it into there. And then as soon as you get out of that angle, hold it like, oh, like there. Oops, sorry. Just start again. <laughs> and problem is, is I, oh. and we both did it. Drug our knuckles on the other side. You can see it's a tad heavy there. So just go over it one more time and you should be good. Hold it. Okay. That's so that, pretty good. Does that work? Yeah, because you can see it's cut down to nothing there. There's no build up there. And now on a long stretch, you can just tie into this and as you wipe, it shouldn't leave much of a ridge that way. Can I still go this way? You can apply it that way and then wipe it into it. Okay. So you have to start a little further back. Oh my goodness. I don't know how you get yours so nice and... Yeah, well, I don't know either. Spread so nicely is what I'm trying to say. Okay, that was almost pro. That was better. Yeah, I like that. Okay, except I don't have any more mud. That's okay, you don't need more. What I would do is I would wipe this lightly, keep that mud on the trowel, come back a little bit, load a little bit more, go over it lightly. Go this way or this way? You can go this way to for now, and then your last wipe, you can go that way. So just load up a little bit on your trowel.
however you want to apply. We just got to apply a little bit more right there. Go back a little further. Oh, your drip. <laughs> Load up the whole. I thought it was on my. That whole little pile, yeah. Yeah, and just then, load the whole thing right here. Oh, and then go. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. And then wipe it from this way? I would way wipe it one more that way. Okay. And then yeah. wipe it this way, but hold it nice and, yeah, more, a little more angle, more, more 90 to the wall, yeah. You're basically wiping it right off. Go over it one more time and try to get rid of those jaggies. Nice. That was good. And then do the corner. Um, I think you're pretty good. Yep. Okay. And then just do that corner and tie into that. Oh my goodness. Sometimes I have to sit there and think, okay, what side of the trowel do I load, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was, I think that's where I was at. Once you do a little bit more, you get good at turning and flipping the hawk and trowel and getting the right angle. Perfect. Yeah, see, you're getting better already. Oh my goodness, let me just. Not a good thing you're coating over. Yeah. Huge mess with this. Oh, did you see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you don't need more mud, you just need to. When you come across here, Camille, we'll just try to fill a little bit of this just in case. Okay. You sure I don't need more mud? Look at all this mud. <laughs> yeah, I think you're good. This is hard once you get into like the actual, this area here. Yeah, go a little lower with that mud, yep. Almost. And then scrape it. I would wipe it once this way because you want to fill this little void there. Yeah, just wipe it once that way. See when you change the angle of your trowel, it, it loaded more onto there. Mm -hmm. So now go I would just way. go once fairly light just to get it all relatively the same. Thickness. Okay, and then I just square it up to the wall and wipe it tight. Good. One more. What did I did I mess up anything down there? It got a little jaggy, but here let okay. me see that quick. Because that was right at the end, I'll just do. See, there's no mud on that trowel. So you did a good job. It's nice and tight. So before I hit this last flat, I have to remember that I haven't cleaned up this tearaway yet. I'll just scrape it out with the knife, pretty easy. Now I can finish that, don't want any hitchhikers.
Now I don't have to be right into that, I don't have to ride right into the very corner because when I wipe this tear away this way, it'll fill that. Because all we're doing is we're filling all the flats now and that way when we do our beads, we come down in this direction, we're not gonna come through and hollow out over top of those beveled areas of the flats. Same there, I don't need to be right into the angle or the corner. So I have my application is good. Now I'll just square up my trowel, wipe it tight, wipe it tight, good to go. We let this dry for about 15 minutes. And what I want to point out is you can tell that we've done a good job on our application. Here where it's wet, it's filled the bevel. Here it's already dry, so we know that we've blended out. There's hardly any build up there. There's, we filled a little bit in there. So it's just making everything nice and flat. Now remember on video four, when we did our taping, when we did our flats, my mud wasn't as fluid. I'd mixed it down a couple times after that to get it a little more fluid. And I was worried about this tape not being embedded well enough. And you can tell that it is close to flush, but we do have a nice thin coat of mud over top of the tape. So when it comes time to painting, you're not gonna see that strip of tape in behind there. So it was borderline too thick when we taped, but you can tell it's still embedded well enough. And if you look around here, this is actually below this butt joint on the bottom side. It's all dry already. So Camille did a really good job just wiping that tight. It's blended in. We've filled what needs to be filled and anything else doesn't actually need mud. And even here, you can see how it's dry right across where I brought my butt joint down. And it just fills what it needs to fill, wipes everything tight, and that's why it's nice to use a trowel. So everything's looking really good. I, our tapes were embedded really well, and uh, it's drying up nice. What's nice about this stage of the game is if you left and had an extended lunch, got the fans and the heat running, if these dried fast enough, we're gonna start on our angles right after. So now I can run my angles through that. It'll be a little bit wet, so I have to be careful. But you could also hit angles and beads in the same day once you start onto your flat. So that's just something to keep in mind. When you're doing a small job, it gets tricky because it's like, oh man, like that's wet, I gotta wait. I, I applied that, now I gotta wait. On a bigger job, if you had a whole house, by the time you did all your flats, you could come around, start doing your angles. And if you had enough time, you could do some of your beads as well. So it's just kind of a, I'm teaching you the proper steps to do it. Then in real life, if you have a small little rental job, hopefully some of the tricks you'll learn is like, oh, okay, that's a little wet, but I can wipe through that. And we'll get onto that when we do the flats right now. We're onto angles. We want to do one side of our angles today. That way everything has time to dry and by the time we're done our beads and we get to the point where we need to do the other side of the angle, the first side is dry enough that we can coat the other side. You'll see when we get there. Um, I'm just gonna scratch everything through. I don't wanna sand, I don't wanna create too much dust. So I'm gonna just clean up my angles. I'll do that really quick. The other thing I wanna note, I'm gonna use a six inch knife today and that's because when we applied our tapes, we got a little bit wide with the taping mud. And I'm worried that coating mud more shallow than the taping mud might cause us an issue with sanding. And maybe you'll see it through the paint. So if I do a six inch knife, I should be able to cover most of that taping mud. So it's a little bit wider, but wider is okay because it means that corner isn't built out as much. It's a little more flat. So it's a little bit harder. It's going to be tricky for Camille. But she can do it. She's a quick learner. So let me clean the, all these angles up first. Keep in mind when we're doing angles, we're only doing one coat. So we want to do a good job of it. Now we're at a point where probably one of the most difficult sections to do is a three-way angle. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. We're basically going to coat one side of each angle, it's called a three-way. You'll see it when we get there, it's too hard to explain. Now, 
A lot of guys will just do that first off the hop and get that out of the way, it's the hardest. And then when you do the rest of the angle, you can just tie into it easily. But let's show you what I'm talking about. I loaded up a lot of mud. So I'm getting to a point where I can load it, the mud lopsided, and as I turn it, I have more mud in the inside than the outside. I'm just gonna work that in. And I'm just gonna do a little shorty, little shorty pieces. So apply your mud on thick. I'm just doing the three-way now. I have more mud to the inside angle, almost no mud on the outside. And I'm just gonna get my mud applied so that I'm far enough out of this corner because this is the hardest part of all taping. And notice here that it's the mud's not in the corner very well. That's because I'm running out of mud on the corner of my knife. So I'll just load a little more and apply it. Don't worry about what it looks like right now. So you can see I've got this side, the top, and then this one, I'm gonna go this way. Now if this step is too hard, and you have a little more time on your hands, then you can just do one side at a time, let it dry. You don't have to do it all at once. The method that I'm showing you today is basically gonna help speed up your project so you're not doing 50 steps to try to get a finished mud job. So it's just, I'm just doing the application right now. I've got mud on there, it's a little bit thick. Here you can see I got some droopies. I'm just gonna cut those off. Now I gotta try to do some finesse. I'll do this top angle first. So I have to remember not to drag mud out of the inside down here. Basically you just gotta get your knife nice and square in the corner. And it's hard because you always seem to be shaking the day you're doing it. So I'm gonna angle my knife out of that corner and I'm wiping like that. Now sometimes with these, where it's hanging onto the other side, I can just do something like that. I don't have to worry about that little buildup because it, it's, it's not built out. When I coat this, it'll coat right over top of that. Don't worry about these little hangies here because you can always catch them later. Sometimes it's better not to play with it too much. So here I'm gonna load a little bit up on the tip. Just the tip. I'm gonna put that in the corner. Wipe straight down. You can see I haven't cut this edge well enough. I'm gonna come out of the corner a bit. I'm gonna put all the weight right here. I'm gonna cut and blend that right up into the corner. Finish Sh there. Shaky McShakerson. <laughs> <laughs> so here, I'm about a half an inch from the inside corner. I'm just gonna blend this. I'm gonna put the knife into the corner. Okay. I'll show you a little trick. I'm gonna cut this one off too. Just gonna put all the weight on the outside of my knife and cut that off. That's a little bonus trick. Now that the hardest part is done, now I can just coat the rest of the one side of the angles. So here, again, load more mud on one side and just basically slap it in there. I got nice width. I'm 
Mm. I got a little ridge going on there, but I'm going to ignore it. And here, doesn't look the prettiest, but that will get covered up later. Now when I come down here, I just have to be careful over this flat. But this is how I'm going to speed up my project, by going over top of this while this is still a little damp. And uh, I don't have to wait too much longer. So again, more mud kind of beveled in there. When I come across this flat, I want to have a knife full of mud. I don't want it dry or I'll just dig out all my work. So you can see I'm getting a little sloppier. I'm just going to go over this real gentle like. And I still have hollows in that inside corner. I'm just going to load up just the very corner of my knife. Just the corner, and I'm going to fill that very inside edge up. Now I'm going to wipe these hangies out of there. Then I'm going to cut this edge. I'm about a half an inch away from the corner. I'm going to cut that off really lightly across that flat. Now, uh, you can do it this way. It might be hard for me to blend up. I know I can do it. So we're going to load a little bit of mud up and we're going to just start real gentle. I have a little glitch there where I started and that's because it's best just to blend up into your work previously. I'm going to try it. It's just harder to do sometimes on weird angles going uphill. I'll finish this and then we'll let Camille get, get a start. Now remember, if I want to wipe material off of this side, I hold my trowel nice and square to the wall. Just refer back to the taping video and we probably got a better shot of it. And I think what we'll do, we'll let Camille get the hang of the angle. We'll let her go this way and then she can tie the three way into that. Yeah, I won't judge too early. But and it's all about application, but you also need it's all about application, but you also need to have it as wide as your knife. You have to have it the full width of your knife when you come through. Mm. Yeah. So Start right at the here. beginning. Yeah. Now I'll show you something that's going on. You're holding your knife like this, and it's doing that funky in the corner. Mm. You're gonna have to hold it more square. Gonna have a little start. I'll get this going for you. Yeah, that's the hardest part. Yeah. It is. Getting it applied is the hardest. You have to hold it a little more square. If you hold it like this, it's gonna it's more likely to leave material on that side. So if you leave it nice and square, it'll wipe off any material on this side. And then as you apply, just lay it flatter. We're a little too thick, but you can see we got the full width of the knife now. So then what I would do is I'd probably go one more wipe because it's too thick. Right? Do one more wipe. Then we got to cut this off. So I would just put all the weight like this, Camille. See that? Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Ага. You want to finish it? Finish sure. it. Let me see if I can. You don't need any more mud. You don't need any mud. Just, oh, you, you got to give that it? one final wipe. Yeah. You got to get it nice and flat now. No, your angle's off because you're holding it. Yeah, still too off. Tricky, tricky. Go again. Yep. That's better. That's really good. And now, then. because I buggered you up when we started, I'm just going to wipe and blend it into my three way. Just, and I have a little ridge there because that's where my tape ended. Okay. So that's my fault because I should have blended that three way out further. Okay. Looks pretty good. Keep going. That's hard to get it up there. Yeah, you got the right application because you're loading it nice. I don't know what the word is. Kind of crooked on your knife. That's good. That's really good. That's too high. You gotta be a little more You're holding your knife too crooked, I guess. Too crooked? Oh yeah, see that's gonna be good. That's a good angle. That's perfect. Okay, so now you're going to have to cut. There you go. Perfect. Shoot, yeah. That's a nice blend job. Now, Bro. when you wipe, you fell out of the corner a bit. You can see how you kind of went down. Yeah. Keep your knife nice into the inside angle and just wipe it one more time. <laughs> Did I cut into your work? Well, you came down with it and then oh. I cut into the work. But that's okay because that's how we learn. Okay. Man, really good. I can tell you're putting a little, like a lot more pressure on the inside corner. So you have to just be careful to try to keep nice, even pressure on the knife. Okay, perfect. And then I can wipe. Go over it one more time and get the mud even. Mm -hmm. Like kind of one consistent thickness, but a little heavy, right? Mm -hmm. Like a little heavy so that you can do one more wipe and then get it perfect. So get rid of that blob, yeah. Now go over the whole thing once. Make sure to stay in the inside corner. Don't fall away from the corner. And then blend and go light, 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 light. Okay, now cut that bottom edge. Perfect. And then one more time, stay in the inside corner. And then when you finish and blend into my work, just lighten it up. Perfect. All right, three ways always bugger me up, Camille, because we're here. And it's kind of the opposite side. So we're going this way, then we're gonna go on the opposite side down, and then the opposite top side this way. Okay. So basically, fill your mud on all three sides. Go about 10 inches to a foot, so that way you can blend into it and not get caught up in the inside corner. Okay. And yeah, I'll just let you just basically get the mud in there. And keep in mind, we're using a six inch knife, which is a lot harder. Is that what's harder? Is it it's just the harder fact that I'm not good yeah, at it? Yeah, it's 30% bigger than a four inch. 
Yeah, your application is really good. And you're applying, you're getting the mud on your knife the right amounts and the right, you know, thicker in the corner and lighter on the edge. Do I thin this out or just do the, get it all on first? Everywhere? Maybe just get it all on. Yeah, see that getting it on your knife is super important. You want me to go down farther? Whatever you're comfortable with doing the three-way, but you definitely can go, you can go as far as you want, really. But yeah, that's probably lots. Okay, and I don't have to do this side, just go out this way now? Yeah, on the top side, you can, if you want to keep it easy, do that whole two-foot width if you want, but if that's your decision. You're basically just getting out of that inside corner. Another tricker, I keep loading the wrong side. I know. Don't, I, yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> I always have to think about it too. I'm like, oh my God. Well, I was like a pro. You see that? If you start at the beginning again, leave, yep. And just thin that out. Master. Okay. This way? Uh, do you want, is that as far as you want to go or do you want to finish the whole top? That's. Do your... you want me to finish the whole top? So I'm just going to finish the whole top. Might as well. <laughs> You're doing it. Spindly Spinelope here. Do I need more here? No, or no, no. Just... I would leave that. Don't touch it. Okay. Get this. Yeah. That's really good. I would do that on all three sides. Or yeah, you can do that. Cut it. Cut that bottom edge off. Perfect. Now leave your last wipe. Yeah, you got it. You're leaving your last wipe to the end. Okay, and then cut it. This way? No, cut that, cut this edge now. All the weight on the left. Good job. Perfect. Now do that top. That top is so darn close, I might just even leave that. Okay, do this one one yep. more time. One more time. Good job. And this one one more time? One more time. Oh yeah, I got the grace. Good job. <laughs> Off the the four inches of death. And then just finish this this one. You can finish that all the way down now. Before we let Camille finish up, I just want to show one thing, and this is in the taping video as well. Is when you're wiping, if you wipe it nice and square, you can see how this side of the knife will take material off of this side of the wall. Now sometimes in the three-way you gotta tip it out so you don't want to dig any material out and wipe like that so that way it's basically just corner to corner now if you go too much then it goofs it all up it's just that subtle difference if you want to wipe material off this side keep it nice and tight and nice and square if you don't want to wipe it out just angle it off a bit and then you won't dig your material out so we'll let Camille finish up and then we'll do a little review at the end See that? Did you see that? Like a pro. Good job. too hard through your flap just go real light nice okay 
I'd load a little more mud down at the bottom and then we can pretty much finish the whole thing. Get it nice and even on your whole knife. Just get a nice even swatch. There you go. And just do one right from the bottom up. Wipe a little tighter and move, move that stuff from the bottom up. There you go. Okay. Before I finish off, I just want to catch up this little corner here. So that way when I coat it later, I'm not falling off of those tapes. I'm just gonna use a little four inch for now and then blend it with the six inch after. That's, these are tricky to do because you gotta go around a corner and yeah. Gonna go around a corner and kind of keep your knife nice and flat and float over top of those tapes. I'm gonna cut that edge off a little bit. And then I'm gonna hold this super flat. I'm gonna keep it like that. One thing to keep in mind with those angles is not to do it too prematurely. Like even today, we coated those over top of just a one coat on our butt joint. Ideal, perfect situation is to do it after the second coat on the butts. But you also need two or three days of drying time so that you can hit the other side of the angle. So now that the next video will be video eight where we do the first coat on the beads. After that, once that's dry, all our drying time is cut down to like a fraction of what it is now and everything speeds up really quick. So I want to get those angles coated now so that when we do our second coat, it's just like bing, bang, boom, done, ready to sand. So there's a little bit of massage work with how the order that you want to do for yourself at home. Just trying to give you all the information that I can. Okay, enough talking. What'd you think of that, Camille? <laughs> it was good. I was really nervous about it, but it turned out to be okay, actually. Yeah, like, it's amazing. I'm, and you'd think that we, I, like, hand-groomed and picked Camille and be like, oh, I know she's done mudding or something <laughs> like that. But no, like, it's raw, organic footage. Like, you literally have a hard time right off the bat, and, like, five minutes later, you got the technique, so. Finesse. Yeah, so. I don't think it's me as a teacher. I think you're just a quick learner, but. <laughs> anyway, stay... Tune for the next video where we do the first coat on the on the corner beads.